This week it's all about serenity and a perfect view of the Rockley Bay coastline as we take you to Iron Hill Villa located in the village of Wim. We have lots in store for you as it was a busy week with the new THA executive. I'm Davia Chambers and Let's Talk Tobago starts now. Lots of changes to THA divisions, Tobago's agro-processors exploring export opportunities in North America, and later, we take you to the Carnival Museum. Stay with us, a Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. I was introduced to the marine environment by my biology teacher when I was 14 years old, and I decided to make it my passion. So I've been diving for almost 32 years. I decided, listen, this is the job for me. I also find great joy in introducing the kids uh, to that environment because that's our future. I am Alvin Douglas. I'm a dive shop operator at the Store Bay Beach facility and tourism is all a we take. Iron Hill Villa is located on the southwestern side of Tobago in the picturesque village of Wim. Wanting to keep the legacy of his grandparents alive, owner Phil Thomas decided to reconstruct what was once a family house to a short-term rental property in 2010. Now to our top story. Change is inevitable and it's no different in government. With the new THA administration comes several changes to the configuration of the Assembly's divisions. Some now have a different name while others have been merged. We'll tell you the rationale for the changes in this report. The Division of Sports and Youth Affairs, the Division of Finance and the Economy, and the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy. These areas have been streamlined to make the operations of the assembly more cohesive and efficient. It was not just a case of redesignating or changing the mix, but rather it is a strategic move to um, allow us to engage the right kinds of actions that will promote the development that we're talking about and as quickly as possible. Visitors to Tobago want to enjoy an authentic experience and the island's natural charms, the warmth of its people, and a unique culture you won't find anywhere else. That's why the island's policy-forming body, the THA, has aligned the two. Key industries that will together enhance Tobago's revenue potential. Therefore, the division is now tourism, culture, and transportation. As we define our product, our tourism product, in relation to our cultural experiences, and when I say cultural experiences, I'm referring to much more than the performing arts, our food, our language, our history, etc. It would allow for that kind of nexus um, so that at the end of the day we have a product that is rooted in the cultural experiences of the persons that live here. Agriculture is another area on which the new administration is focused. That division is now called Food Production and Fisheries. The redesignated Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor will create a better link among the three sectors. Our core developmental program, as we, I would have emphasized over the last couple of weeks, has to do with a basic model of community development. And we're saying as we seek to empower the communities and persons therein, um, and utilizing the informal skills and, and so on, we'll get to the point where they can move from some of those activities into entrepreneurial activities. And therefore, with enterprise there, it, it is a smooth movement in respect of either grant funding or loans to engage in these entrepreneurial activities. Rounding off the list are the Division of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, the Division of Health, Wellness and Family Development, and the Division of Settlements, Urban Renewal and Public Utilities. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Iron Hill Villa makes you wonder what the inspiration for the name is, right? Well, Iron was the nickname of the owner's grandfather who lived for 109 years. The family honored him by naming the villa Iron Hill. Now, residents on the northern end of the island are breathing a sigh of relief as two additional public transportation buses have been added to the fleet. Here are the details in this report. Tobago has been consistent in its call for improved public transport. 
So, the recent commissioning of two new 25-seater buses from the Public Transport Service Corporation, PTSC, is a step in the right direction. It means the people of Palatuve, Lansfermi and surrounding areas now have reliable transportation to service their communities once again. And there's an assurance to Tobago that more buses are coming. This purchase heralds the corporation's strategic intent to acquire new buses to engage in a fleet renewal program. The corporation is currently in the process of acquiring 35 new buses to bring efficiency to the service. 15 of these new buses will be allocated to Tobago. The buses to service Tobago will, will be specially designed with specifications to suit the Tobago terrain to ensure reliability and longevity of these buses. The island is also being reassured that support will be provided to ensure there is a minimal disruption of service. This includes servicing mechanical works and maintenance of the island's fleet. We will continue from Trinidad to provide whatever support is necessary by sending people here to assist, by bringing buses to Trinidad if necessary, but whatever we have to do, we want to ensure that bus, the bus service in Tobago will continue without disruption. Public transport is an issue that Tobago House of Assembly has been monitoring and there's a desire in the assembly to ensure the new buses are secured as soon as possible. I am very cognizant that there may be some critic about the number of units being added. Let us not focus on what we have now. Let us focus on what we should have for the next few months. Those 15, 15 units, we had to focus on it. And I am, being, I am the secretary with, uh, in the line of public utilities, I will make sure I emphasize and push to make sure that those 15 units will be delivered to enhance the lives of Tobagoans. The corporation says the new buses should be delivered by November. I'm Marlon Gutzelben for Let's Talk Tobago. The property reflects a modern style and its beautifully landscaped flower gardens create a very relaxing atmosphere. Added to the ambience, guests who stay at the villa get discounted rental vehicles. And who doesn't accept a discount? This is definitely the place for your next vacation. We move to a serious issue now, something that plagues the world, human trafficking. Human trafficking is the recruitment or receipt of persons by means of threat for exploitation. It's also an issue right here in Trinidad and Tobago. That's why one international organization is bringing awareness to this problem. Here are the details in this report. In 2016, three nationals of this country were held in Venezuela for suspected human trafficking of seven Venezuelans. Human trafficking is not a ghost in this country. It's very much alive. And that's why the U.S. National Bar Association Judicial Council, which was founded in 1971 to eradicate racial and class bias from every aspect of the judicial and law enforcement process, held their midwinter conference on human trafficking in Tobago. We try to focus on the needs of the community in terms of what the legal issues are that are facing the communities. So this is why human trafficking, because of its... Um, reach right now into all areas of society, we determined that we'd come to Tobago and have the Human Trafficking Conference here. The team also hosted a town meeting for all stakeholders and residents, including students, to bring awareness to the burning issue. The hope is to prevent the trafficking of persons, protect victims of human trafficking, and prosecute trafficking offenders. 45 million slaves in the world now that to me is just intolerable and we have to do something. It's the newest scourge that we've had. Of course, human trafficking brings a lot of money to organized crime and to fight organized crime, to fight the worst type of organized crime that we've seen in centuries. This is why we wanted to address this issue. We have to spread the word and we have to get on top of this issue. And the Chief Secretary Calvin Charles also sees the conference as timely. As the Assembly is further seeking to enhance its systems, which includes the support provided to the judiciary in Tobago. Justice must not be taken for granted. It is critical that we seek justice wherever, and not merely for ourselves, but especially for those citizens who are unable to do so on their own. 
it would be negligent of us to be concerned only with legal justice. It is an imperative that every person is afforded the same opportunities and treatment under the law. The annual Midwinter Conference was host to over 100 legal minds from around the world. I'm Carolyn Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but when we return, the big names for Jazz 2017 have been revealed. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're tuning in to Let's Talk to Bagel. Did I mention that Iron Hill Villa is in close proximity to Scarborough and many other activity hotspots? Well, it is. It's near to Mount Irvin, Turtle Beach, and Buku. We move from Tobago to Canada in this next report. This country has been collaborating with Canada for many years. Actually, since the 1800s, Canada sent salt, cod, and lumber to us, and we exported rum and sugar. As years went by, the relationship further developed and covered a wide range of sectors such as security, education, and governance. And in 2017, this is how they want to partner with Tobago. Jams, jellies, honey, all from Tobago, may soon be exported to North America. That's because Tobagonian agro-processors are exploring the opportunities to export their produce to Canada. The agro-processors participated in a workshop facilitated by the High Commission of Canada with support from the Tobago House of Assembly, the Tobago Agro-Processors Association, and the export company of Trinidad and Tobago, Export TT. Consumers, both locally and internationally, continue to renew their focus on food quality and food safety, and workshops like these have become essential to the establishment of an integrated supply chain that meets and exceeds international best practices. As a small island developing state, we recognize that we cannot compete on scale as per se China, but we can establish ourselves as a quality producer and continue to exploit niche markets. The participants learned about specific sector opportunities in the Canadian market. This includes ways to connect Canadian importers as well as understanding the standards and requirements their products should meet. Trade Facilitation Office has uh, information available on the website, and there is really wealth of information. You will find uh, a number of generic market studies, including there are some few useful ones uh, on the food market. So the, these studies will help you really orient yourself about the market, about the size of the market, about, uh, about the trends. Successful exporters will increase sales and profits, reduce the impact of local economic challenges on their businesses, and lower the unit costs of production. And of course, Canada will also benefit. Canada believes that prosperity is strongly linked to economic opportunities beyond a country's uh, borders. At a time when there is, in so much of the world, a very, very powerful wave of protect protectionism, Canada is open to trade. We're open for business. The openness brings jobs and it brings prosperity. The workshop is in keeping with the Tobago House of Assembly's goal to diversify the economy and assist in the expansion of the island's private sector. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. If you're looking for a venue to host a small wedding or birthday party, Iron Hill Villa is the place. You can also make special requests and they will be fulfilled. We take a look at healthcare now. Just last year, 986 babies were born in Tobago. Despite the many healthy births, some mothers get a condition called pregnancy-induced high blood pressure. 
Now, if this condition goes untreated, it can lead to death for both mother and baby in extreme cases. So in this report, Omodara Mills highlights the problem and proper health care for both mother and baby, as this is an important part of treating the condition. Here's more. That's the sound of an unborn baby's heartbeat, the fetus of a mother with a condition called pregnancy-induced hypertension. This is high blood pressure that develops after the 20th week of pregnancy and goes away once the baby is born. But if untreated, this condition can lead to severe complications and possibly death. That's why doctors and midwives in Tobago closely monitor and test patients with this condition. We do assessment to determine how the baby is to be delivered, right? Um, if there are no problems, then the patient has a labor induced. If preeclampsia occurs between the weeks of 34 weeks to 36 weeks, then assessment is made to determine if the pregnancy induced hypertension is mild or severe, right? So certain blood tests are done. And these blood tests are done on the liver, the kidneys, the blood count, the cutting factors, and the platelet count. And ultrasound is done to determine the size of the baby and if the baby is affected. Also, um, the urine is tested for protein as well, and blood pressure checks are done. Pregnancy-induced high blood pressure can affect various organs, such as the kidneys, liver, and the brain. In this case, it's called preeclampsia. In more severe cases, the expectant mother can have seizures, also called eclampsia. According to the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, eclampsia is the leading cause of maternal deaths in the Caribbean and Latin America. Besides proper prenatal care, health professionals also pay attention to both mother and baby during delivery. We give medication as is prescribed and we give fluids. So the midwife's role, like in labor itself, is to be there and monitor, but also encourage an environment where they're comfortable because they don't want them in a sterile room and they're there by themselves. So they encourage one family member to be there. And they also involve them or inform them of what they're going to be doing while they're in labor. Pregnant women are also responsible for their own health. First-time mother, Latoya Wachuku, found out she was hypertensive early in her pregnancy. She was grateful for the professional and caring service she got at the Scarborough General Hospital. She gave birth to a healthy baby girl, Chisum, mainly because she followed her doctor's advice. You have your part to do, exercise, rest, change your diet, um, take your medication in regulation, and of course keep your doctors up to date with any changes that are taking place. The medical team at the Scarborough General Hospital also provides new mothers with postnatal care. Its role is to ensure there are no lasting effects of the condition after delivery. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Many activities are offered to keep guests occupied, which include hiking and bike riding. Now come with me as I take you on a journey through the years the highs and lows, the milestones and memorable moments since 1980 when the new THA was formed. Let's have a look at this week's THA footnotes. On September 30th, 1963, Tobago was devastated by Hurricane Flora. More than 20 lives were lost during the destruction. And agencies such as the Defense Force, along with volunteers, gathered to help with the cleanup and repairs. Over 6,000 homes were reportedly damaged or destroyed. The agricultural sector was also impacted. That event changed how the island looks at national emergencies. Today, the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, is tasked with ensuring the island is prepared for any such threat. TEMA has been around since 2008 when it replaced the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA. NEMA was established through Executive Council Minute No. 64 on March 9, 1998. It brought Tobago a more efficient and effective disaster management approach. It focused on three key areas of disasters, prevention, preparation, and mitigation. Today, TEMA coordinates a network of people and agencies to ensure the most effective response possible in times of disaster. In 2010, the agency was able to respond when Hurricane Thomas hit. 
its emergency operations center was affected by the storm. But Tima was still able to react quickly, activating three shelters on the island. The agency assisted families whose homes were damaged and provided emergency supplies where needed. Tima has been recognized for its high standards when it comes to disaster preparedness. In fact, the agency is widely regarded as one of the region's best. It's earned Diamond Standard Certification by the Ministry of Public Administration for its continued excellence. Tima's capability has also been strengthened through various partnerships. Last year, Tima commissioned the Tobago Disaster Relief Warehouse in collaboration with the U.S. Embassy. This is indeed an historic day in the records of our commodity building and disaster management on the island. This partnership has proven fruitful and Tobagonians will deservedly benefit from this very important venture. And in November, Tima cooperated with the British High Commission on Disaster Coordination Drills. We have a, we've had a planning exercise this morning and we've got an all-day exercise tomorrow with the uh, TEMA agency just so that, to ensure that we can work together properly in the di disaster relief so they understand our capabilities. The agency conducts weekly staff briefings, regular drills and monthly testing of multi-hazard early warning system sirens. That's to ensure it's ready and able to give a timely and effective response. The Tobago Emergency Management Agency is a unit under the Office of the Chief Secretary. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk Tobago. Up next, details on the Metrology Workshop. Don't touch that remote. Let's Talk Tobago will be right back. Stay with us. They say it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters the most. And in the face of disaster, chaos, and panic, it is the Tobago Emergency Management Agency's comprehensive emergency response plans that will matter most to Tobago. This agency's modernized approach to emergency management is driven by technology, powered by networking, focused on community resilience, open to partnering, enhanced through training, and led by a highly competent and dedicated staff. This has positioned them as one of the premier disaster management agencies in the region and earned them Trinidad and Tobago Diamond Standard Certification. Congrats, TEMA, Tobago Emergency Management Agency. Thanks for staying with us. This is Let's Talk Tobago. What keeps guests returning to Iron Hill Villa is the peacefulness of the area and the service is always accompanied by a smile. Now, listen up. The Trinidad and Tobago Borough of Standards conducted a series of metrology workshops on the island. Now, this is not to be confused with meteorology, which is the science of weather patterns. Metrology is the science of measurement, such as pounds and kilograms. But why is all of this necessary? Well, the Metrology Act is being implemented and will have implications for both entrepreneurs and consumers. Let's take in the details. There are laws in our country that govern the correct use of scales, weights and measurements for supermarkets, mini-marts and groceries. They come under the Metrology Act No. 18 of 2004, which took effect in 2015. And the Trinidad and Tobago Bureau of Standards is responsible for sensitizing our local business owners about the act and the impact that it will have on their businesses and consumers. The Metrology Act, and in particular verification, ensures that the measuring devices such as the scales are accurate. It means therefore that the seller has confidence in his or her skill. Therefore, he or she knows that I am not robbing myself or giving away produce. On the other hand, the consumer has confidence that if I purchase something from that scale, then I am getting my money's worth. It's basically value for money. So it becomes a win-win situation. Part of the act is the establishment of the Legal Metrology Inspectorate. This unit of inspectors conducts tests to verify the accuracy of instruments of measurement used by vendors. When we come out to someone's premises, we walk with standards, standard weights. These are weights that are calibrated and are traceable. They are very accurate, and we use these weights to test the device. And at the end of the test, we will make a pronouncement as to 
if the device, for example, the scale, passes the verification or fails the verification. The Bureau of Standards conducted three seminars on the island. The sessions helped sensitize business operators on the process for the verification of scales, which is scheduled to begin in May. The implementation of the Metrology Act will also help businesses meet international requirements. Standards are important in today's global economy because they promote industrial efficiency, they also ensure public health and safety, and they also protect the environment. There are penalties for non-compliance. Fines can range from $2,000 to $100,000, and imprisonment can be anywhere from six months to two years. As such, it's expected that metrology workshops like this one can sensitize businesses and ensure that they're up to date on the laws and regulations. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. If you're coming to Tobago to enjoy the carnival or jazz festivities, you don't have to travel far. Scarborough is only 10 minutes away from Iron Hill Villa. And after Carnival comes the Tobago Jazz Experience. I hope you book your tickets right after you hear the songs in this report. Juliet James was at the launch of the Tobago Jazz Experience 2017 and tells us who the big acts are. R&B sensation D'Angelo, musical icon Grace Jones, veteran reggae stars Shabba Ranks and Morgan Heritage, jazz saxophonist Elon Trotman and local crowd favorite Kess the Band. These are just some of the artists who will grace the stages at Tobago Jazz Experience 2017. It's an eclectic cast that will ensure this year's edition of jazz hits all the right notes. A mix of music that platinum sponsor Flo believes will create a superior product. We are really energized about the whole thing. We're happy to be connected with it. I think that um, you're going to find that a lot of people are going to be very much enthused by what we're offering this year, what you're offering in terms of the performances and so forth. The Tobago Jazz Experience is much more than music. The festival will partner with the film company of Trinidad and Tobago to showcase local and regional music-themed films. Despite the budgetary constraints, I would tell you that we are attempting to still keep the festival at quality and good entertainment. That you come, you enjoy what we have to offer in the communities, you enjoy all the other niches, all the other sites, attractions. To add to the quality of the experience, other stakeholders will highlight local fashion and art through Fashion Coda at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Gulf Resort and Levy at Villa Being. Tobago Jazz Experience is sponsored in part by the Tobago House of Assembly and Flow and runs through April 22nd to 30th. From the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, I'm Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear what you, the viewers, have to say. Today we're asking, what do you think of the Tobago Carnival Museum? While you think about it, let's take a look at who had their say this week. I think it's a good idea, brilliant idea, so that we can portray the works of the Tobago Mass people from ages gone back. It's long overdue and we should have our work documented so the younger ones would be able to come and go back, especially like Abastini and these people. We should really have it documented. That should have been done already, say over 25 years and more, because we miss all like men like Abastini and these guys should be in the archive. So the children can see who used to play the type of mass and devil in Tobago. Every country documents its history, its legacy and its culture. And I believe as Tobagonians or as persons in the Caribbean, as smaller countries, that it is important that we all archive our documentation and Carnival being what we sell to tourists, what we sell as tourism. We close another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always, we thank you for watching. Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From our house to yours, 
I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week.